We've heard messages this morning at the BCC conference about businesses frustrated with a lack of answers on Brexit. Do you share that frustration? Yes. I mean, we always started with a view that we were neither levers or stairs. In fact, sadly, we've turned out to be true. We seem to be determined not to be either a lever or a stair. We've had four years of uncertainty for business, and that's just too long. Sadly, I think we may well have another four years of uncertainty. How no deal ready is your business? Do you see it as, a, as, a, as an outcome that's likely, and is legal in general ready for that? We've been ready for no deal for quite quite a long period of, of time, but I don't think it's a, a likely outcome right now. You don't think it's likely? What, what, what measures have you been taking? We, we don't have to take that many big measures, and I think our regulator and the Bank of England has actually done a great job of getting the, our industry ready if it, if it doesn't happen. And also the Europeans have pr been pretty amenable, you know, paying pensions to our European clients, no problem. Paying our life insurance payouts to our European clients, no problem. So we've, we've come to some very amicable so mm. solutions off the radar. You seem quite relaxed about whichever Brexit outcome we might end well, up with. I, I am totally relaxed about it. I think technology and demography are actually bigger issues for the, for the UK. Economy. The UK economy has grown about the same rate as Europe over the last four years. Employment's at an all-time high. Vacancies at an all-time low. All-time high. Interest rates at an all-time low. And investment opportunities in Britain are at the all-time high. And somehow we just have to create an environment which allows people to step up and invest more and copy what we've been doing for the last few years. Are you, are you feeling like, uh, like Brexit has been a big distraction, either politically or we've managed to not be distracted by it within the business? We've not been distracted by it at all within the business. And in fact, a lot of the towns and cities outside of London have really lent into Brexit. They've accelerated their planning processes and, and given planning permissions much quicker. They've encouraged industries to step up and invest more. And that's why the, the economies continue to grow. At, you know, on average about one and a half percent, which has been a pretty good performance on a, on a European basis. Leaning into Brexit, what does that mean? What are the, what are the upsides that uh, parts of the UK can, can grasp from Brexit? For, for many years we've had a nimbyism, which we've, we've prided out, not in my backyard, yes. approach to many things, whether that's been housing, urban regeneration, venture capital, that's all changed in the last three or four years. As people have recognised that actually we need to take things that are going to counteract the negative Im impact of Brexit. And Brexit's either cost us half a percent or one percent of GDP growth, that's 10 to 20 billion pounds per annum over the last the last few years and that's a very sad outcome so far but lots of people have decided actually you know what it's time we did try and solve the infrastructure deficit which plagues both America and indeed the UK mm, so if there is this this there's a, there's a big mismatch isn't there at the moment Nigel we've, we've talked about before a lot of money floating around the global economy a lot of investment opportunity in infrastructure in Western yeah. economies how do the two meet well, I think people just have to have the confidence and the capability to do things and if the politicians would stop creating this area of absolute uncertainty which is creating an unbelievable amount of frustration in business and let business get on with trying to do the right things. Our economy between when Brexit was announced in 2015 and when we're likely to impl implement it by say let's call it 2022 will have changed profoundly whether that's electric cars, whether that's uh, renewable energy, whether it, that's massive changes to the environment, making our universities more venture capital friendly. All these things are going to happen during those, those, those two periods. Just an example, legal in general, it took us 175 years to make our first billion of profit, mm. seven years to make our second billion of profit. So in, in those seven or eight years, you can do an awful lot of things. There's a lot of excitement in some quarters about trade deals that the UK might be able to do after Brexit. Is that a big untapped reserve for, for you? Do you see that as a big positive, either with the US or elsewhere? Because yeah, financial services, it's hard to do those trade deals. I, I don't agree at all. On, it on, has on, been. I, I, absolutely. I, I think the, 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 everybody's got the same problems now. They've got this massive ticking demographic time bomb, apart from anything else. Massive undersaving for, for pensions, massive underprovision of housing, accommodation, and health services for, for an aging population. And you know, China is, is the absolute growth area for that. They, they've got the biggest problem. America's got a problem. We've got a problem. So everyone's looking for solutions. Britain could lead the world in those solutions because we can experiment so much better, so much quicker. Because in part, we've got the National Health Service here in Britain, which is still a great asset.